One additional one that I'd like to highlight is the lactate pathway or the impact of lactate when we exercise. This is getting discussed more and more these days on podcasts and elsewhere. One interesting finding, for instance, is that lactate is what's produced when we exercise intensely. Our muscles produce lactate and lactate is a very powerful appetite suppressant. Now, some of you may be saying, when I exercise hard, I get really, really hungry. Fuel as needed for you. If you're an intermittent faster, do that thing. If you like to eat right after you exercise, do that. Do what's best for you, but understand that lactate has powerful effects on our appetite because why? Because lactate has powerful effects, not just on our body, but on our brain. And it is able to impact the activity of neurons in our so-called hypothalamus, a little marble-sized region above the roof of our mouth that contains some of the neurons that control our appetite and our degree of satiety. It's because of the arousal we've been talking about all along today, but it's also because we believe that there's glucose, there's fuel that's been spared that then can be used by the neurons because during the exercise, you weren't using quite as much glucose, you were using lactate. Now, lactate is also a stimulus for something called the blood-brain barrier, which is made up of endothelial cells, specialized endothelial cells that act as a barrier so that certain things, in particular large molecules, can't cross from the body into the brain. Lactate stimulates the release of something called VEGF, V-G-E-F, which is basically an endothelial growth factor that promotes the stability and growth of the blood-brain barrier. This is very important in the context of brain health and longevity, and longevity in particular, because one of the major features of age-related cognitive decline and one that's greatly exacerbated in Alzheimer's is a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. So the integrity, the structure and function of the blood-brain barrier is something that's very important and related to brain health. When I say great things happen, I mean in the context of the ways that exercise can improve brain function because those elevated levels of lactate in turn also increase BDNF. We already talked about the blood-brain barrier. Basically the muscles producing lactate is terrific, but the astrocytes producing lactate for the neurons to feed on is also terrific because lactate can be used as a fuel and it triggers all these downstream or subsequent mechanisms, including BDNF. So basically what we're talking about is the lots and lots of ways that exercise improves brain health in the long term, BDNF, brain plasticity, stability of synapses and so forth, maybe even new neurons, maybe. Not a lot of evidence for that in humans yet, frankly, but maybe. And exercise can improve brain function in the short term through mechanisms of arousal, but also through alternate fuel usage, such as lactate from the body and from cells within the brain that we call the astrocytes, and the release of all sorts of other things, IGF-1 to promote more vasculature, and on and on and on.